Welcome to Vader TV, the network for innovators. I'm Bambi Francisco. For those who've watched our shows before, well, you'll notice that we have a change of format. The idea is to bring in four experts and talk about uh, one topic, one sector, and discuss four companies that fall under that category, four companies that we found on Vader. And uh, today's topic is social networking, and it's a hot topic. 55% of teenagers are on social networks, and the number one activity for teenagers online is sharing their personal creations. So we're going to talk about that. And so let me introduce um, the experts. We have Ezra Roizen, who is an investment banker for media, digital media space, in the digital media space, and also a columnist for Always On. John Chanal, Vader TV's managing editor, and Pete Cashmore. He is a um, blogger and founder of Mashable. Yep. Okay, so John is going to be the keeper of the, the timer. Yes, We're going to have three and a half minutes to discuss four companies. And John, you're going to kick it off with uh, telling us by telling us uh, who the first company is. Flickster is first. Okay, no, I think the Internet has taught us that nobody is interesting for more than three minutes on the Internet. So we're going with three minutes. Okay, Flickster, they're attacking a huge market, right? Everybody goes sees movies, like $50 billion, $60 billion a year market. Um, they've got a big user base. The big question is, how do they monetize it? So let's take a look at the pitch real quick, and then we'll talk about it. We now reach uh, a little over 9 million uh, unique visitors a month. I think our movie ratings database is, uh, is closing in on the 1 billion movie ratings mark. Um, our employee count is closing in on double digits. It's really exciting for us. We raised um, a first round of venture financing from Jeremy Liu at uh, Lightspeed Ventures, who's been fantastic to work with. Okay, that's it. We just heard from Joe Greenstein. Ezra, you have some strong opinions on Flickster? You know, I think the... Uh, the social networking media um, convergence is still sort of to be proven. Obviously, there's a number of huge bets and large media companies have tried to figure out how to make social networks work for them. You have NBC and iVillage, Fox and MySpace, and you have um, Disney who just acquired Clone Penguin. I mean, there's clearly a the idea that those two things go together. I don't know if anybody's cracked the code on exactly how that fit works perfectly. Flickster clearly sort of organically started not by mixing a media company and a social network. They're sort of half media, half social network, and are their own really interesting model. Um, but it'll be curious and it'll be fun to watch how they grow from where they are now to do they really become sort of a media portal? Do they really become a social network? Um, it, it seems like they're sort of at phase one. What is sort of phase two for Flickster? I think they're a combination because I think social networks and media do come together, and I think ultimately what they end up doing is they end up selling movie downloads, potentially. I mean, that's where it's going, and they and get the social... World. Sure, but they're already world. doing, like, uh, affiliate links and that kind of thing, so right. come on, it's going to be huge. I mean, it's a huge site. It's going to have... It's got you know all these thumbnails. You keep clicking through, right? You want to look at uh, actress photos. You want to look at actor photos. You want to look at latest movies. You want to view videos. Um, and then there's the whole social networking thing. I don't see how you guys are gonna even hint that this one's gonna fail. I don't think it's just uh, gonna it's a fail. Fun site. I think the monetization of it. You'll still, still try monetization's to figure it out. Monetization's easy. Bit. I mean, compare that to something like Facebook. Yeah, where monetization's, monetization's easy. hard. Netflix made money. Blockbuster made money. Makes money. But I mean, think about advertising and marketing around movies. As you probably said earlier today, sure, sixty percent market, of the production costs of movies go. You know, and that's yeah. pretty huge too. Downloads, DVD sales, marketing latest movie. The question is who. The question is who's going to buy. The question is who's going to buy this company. And who are the know? competitors? Yeah, I know. Who is, what's the rumor mill? Yeah, the rumor mill says they get taken out, but by whom? You know, that's you know. The question is. Um, and for how much? Right, how much? Pete, any other thoughts? You're th big, big thumbs up on these guys. I'm not the acquisitions guy. Okay. Yeah, you're I the think. Guys I mean, I think it's a thumbs up. I think the question is if they're going to be acquired, what's the value to the acquirer in the future? I mean, there's a there's a really interesting site here. Is the acquirer someone who believes they can make a lot of money on movie downloads? Is there somebody who believes they can sort of back end this into a broader social network? Um, or do we just find that there are a lot, people are going to want to belong to 10 different social networks? I'm going to want to have my movie social network. I'm going to want to have my TV social network. I'm going to want to have my radio social network. I'm going to want to have my car social network. I'm going to want to have my dog social network. How many? How many social networks do people want to belong to? Or do they really, at the end of the day, want to belong to Facebook and have my movie widget, my TV widget, my dog widget, my, my radio widget, and, and, and really sort of collapse those experiences in the communities into one 
place. Yeah, but they've got that one wrapped up. They've got a really, really popular Facebook app. The interesting thing about um, Flickster, which surprised me, is that they're able to create a social network that's really broad and that connects people that you would find that you would never think that you'd be connected with. Like, for instance, I, um, I, did, I took this test on Flickster and was find somebody you find somebody like me. And I was matched up with a 13-year-old girl. And so it's pretty broad, it's pretty mainstream, um, and it's, it, it connects a lot of people. <laughs> Next company, Seismic. They call themselves the Video Twitter. They've got an all-star lineup of uh, angel investors. Ron Conway of PeopleSoft fame, Steve Case of AOL. Um, who have Lauren Feldman of 1938 Media trashed this company and then uh, other people have defended it. Uh, the one thing I don't understand is why people want to see what all their friends are doing all the time. What do you do when you see them actually in person? Uh, let's take a look at it and then we'll talk about it. If you think about YouTube, YouTube is great because it enables the long tail, but it's more about posting the videos. There is no conversations there. Whereas Sysmic, my new company, is really only about the conversation. So the principle is very simple. People go, they share a thought. It can be on politics. It can be on anything that goes on, on the head, it can be anywhere, they are like they really are in real life, like we are on our blogs. And then their friends answer, so we have a social software layer, where like on Twitter or other social software you can see who is following you and you can see who you are following or the friend is following, and your friends get all your videos. So CNN of Loic Lamour's friends, Pete, Ezra, what do you think? Pete, Pete go ahead and start. Yeah, well, I mean, I've used this. Um, it's kind of unwashed geeks, kind of, in the evenings, they kind of sit down, and uh, I think it's kind of uncool if you're kind of uh, overdressed for it. You really need to be... Uh, in your slippers and things. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, it Quality is kind of, of the videos, too. Is it is kind of a video Twitter, but... I mean, I think the problem with starting with Twitter as your benchmark is that, that you know, Twitter, although it's cool, I think, to find the category of sort of real-time almost synchronous, semi-synchronous communication, frenetic communication about things that just really are completely irrelevant, like I'm putting on my socks, are you? Um, the sensation, on one hand, of being watched and having, having sort of a, a gallery to your life, I think is, is fun for some folks, but A, how well does that transfer to video, and you put the video barrier in there, are people, are a lot of people really going to wake up and say, you know what, now I want to actually put a, a movie out there of me doing nothing. And uh, although Seinfeld put off a whole show on nothing, I think most people don't have the distribution channel he did for a show on nothing. I think a show on nothing eventually is kind of a show on nothing. But think about what people are watching these days. Remember when Facebook launched their news feed last year and I, I wrote about saying this is like tabloid journalism on Facebook because now you're watching people, you're reading about your friends as opposed to, about, as opposed to reading about um, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. And so in the same way, you're going to be watching a lot of videos of your friends. I mean, it's total voyeurism, and it's great for the person producing it because at the end of the day, and we had this discussion earlier, Ezra, people want to be noticed. People want to be Yeah, noticed. but I mean, you worked on reality TV for Spike, and your, your comment at one time was there's a lot of editing in reality TV because most of reality TV is people like walking around and people getting a cup of coffee and so on. So... I mean, most of what happens in people's day-to-day -day life isn't that sort of Amazingly and enough, the people love soap operas, and that's okay. They people know this goes a little themselves. bit soap. This is, these are like the new age, the new era soap operas. Right. But, so let me tell you where I think this sort of applies. Um, if you've looked on NewYorkTimes.com, they have bloggingheads.tv, and now they have that new site that Peter Thiel, an investor in Vader, also an investor in this new company, Big Think, or so it's all about these one-minute debates using webcams, and that's what they're using, just right. debates. And so if you can apply it, if you could talk about a, a topic, if you apply this to a particular topic and use it as part of traditional media, then you have sort of fresh voices or debates going along with sort of the traditional production around a particular topic. My biggest problem with a lot of video stuff also is it's tough to scan a video. You're kind of in mm -hmm. for the ride with a video. I, and so, yeah. and so I can, if I read print articles, I can scan through stuff and get what I want. But if I if I gotta go into video and I gotta look at something, I don't even know what I'm getting until maybe partway through it, or maybe I wasted my time getting in there. So to a large extent, text for sort of incidental transactional communication 
it works actually pretty well, and I think video sometimes does and doesn't work as well. So I think the trick is going to be for these guys, how do they make something people are willing to consume in mass volume, because this is definitely a mass volume site where it's based on video. I, th I think you maybe underestimate a little bit the kind of uh, appeal of Twitch, or is kind of, you know, Twitch kind of lets you do globally kind of what we're doing here, which is just kind of chat. Um, and there's no real, kind of on the internet, there's no real uh, way. It's all very directed. You know, I might email you something, you might email something back. Yeah. Um, there's no kind of casual networking. And I think that's kind of where Twitter is right now. It's just, you know, you can network with people. Maybe you can have people on the fringes of your network that you're not necessarily uh, got any intention there, but you can build up the connections. Maybe you might, you know, be in their city sometime, meet up. Um, so I think it's kind of uh, passive connections that's kind of valuable on Twitter. And if you look at the way that uh, Loic has kind of marketed this, he's really gone heavy on the Twitter. He's giving out access codes on Twitter. Yeah. Um, he has Twitter on his business make, card. Is yeah. this company going to yeah. make money? Yeah. Is this gonna, is well, yeah, the business model money? was interesting. He talked about later on in the pitch how they're going to create channels, it sounded like, like a bunch of people who like to mm. run. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be real attractive for Nike to put an ad, a video ad, in front of those people? So right. it sounds like he's got a lot of different ways. He's a five-time serial entrepreneur. So my guess is there's, they've I, got some ideas I would also say I'm not convinced by it technically right now. I don't know if you guys have played around, but it's all flash. Um, you know, there's, there's a bunch of kind of bugs. I know it's in, it's in kind of alpha or whatever it's in, but uh, yeah, the I'm kind of... Videos and it's, it's yeah, yeah, it's dark. all flash, takes a long time to load, you're right. clicking through, it sometimes it doesn't work. Um, they maybe need to uh, up their game a little bit on the technical I, I also, stuff. I don't know the numbers, I don't know the numbers, maybe Bami knows the numbers, she knows all the numbers, but the, um, the what percent of YouTube content is the fat tail versus the long tail? Is it, do people, is, it, is, is that content are people interested in everything, or are they interested in a few things? And the question is, there's a lot of people well, putting well, lots of stuff up. Well, look at the top ten How do you of the most popular videos on YouTube. I mean, it used to be the SNL videos or mm, the, right. those videos, but look at the top ten today. Right. And there are videos produced by either independent producers or just um, an amateur. Yeah, well, that's my one question about this. It's very interesting, as you said, to unwash geeks. It's going to be very yeah. interesting to people who well, message and stuff, but is that going to extend to the Here's the thing. Here's the I thing. think that I'm going to see my little niece pinging me all the time going, hi. I don't know. I, I mean, uh, the, the question, as we raised kind of YouTube, YouTube lets you do direct video uploads. You can have those conversations on YouTube. Right. You'll have a much bigger audience. If you're in the kind of the market for getting famous or something, go on YouTube. It's, it's much bigger. You know, what Seismic's got is kind of like Twitter right now. It's got this kind of uh, nucleus of um, kind of geeks, Silicon Valley, um, you know, and saying, hey, are kids going to use this? No, kids aren't going to use this. This is, you know, look at all the marketing. Uh, Twitter, Loic's going through to, I don't know, Scoble, those kind of people. So he's very much going the Twitter route. It's going to be kind of a Twitter or maybe a Flickr if it extends, right. but it's not going to be mainstream. It's not going to be a YouTube and it's not going to be a way to get famous. It's just going to be a way for maybe you know, more intelligent, maybe better off kind of people. So do you think, do you uh, think it becomes... Older people, I would say, as well. You know, is there are many 20-year-olds on there. Is it a tool for extended dialogue, or is it a tool for putting a shout-out to your homies? Are people going to have long conversations? YouTube, YouTube's got too much traction yeah. there. You know what Seismic could do? Maybe if they have some kind of API or something, they can get traction. Because if you look at what Twitter did, that was all on API. If you look at what Flickr did, it was all on API. Maybe if we get a seismic API, we're going to have that kind of There is one. Yeah, he says at the end there is one. Because okay. he's so looking for technical people and says we've got sure. an API. I sure. think is it public? they apply it seen. to some okay. a company that we're going to so we're going to watch source. later, which is Friction yeah. TV, and I think they're going to partner with a lot of either or companies to brand themselves. Use this as a way to dialogue around that brand. Right. And. Uh,